Hey guys, I'm Bryn. I'm Heather. We're pharmacists out of the box, and today we have a very special guest. So Todd Yuri is the guy behind Pharmacy Podcast Network. Oh my gosh, we have him on our show. This is going to be so awesome. So he is the guru, the guy when it comes to pharmacy podcasts. He's it's, like Wizard of Oz. Like he's oh like the gosh. man behind. That's so what it is. <laughs> And what's interesting to me about Todd, he's very down to earth. He puts so much content out there. Um, his pharmacy channel or network changed my life. I know when I was looking to pivot, I didn't even realize there were podcasts for pharmacists. Either. I didn't. And either. there's like this huge genre. There's so many different topics. So I just was picking over 700, 800 episodes. It's, it's crazy. And it's growing all the time. Yeah. Yep. So Todd's amazing. And I think people will find surprising he's not even a pharmacist. <laughs> That's I guess a for- blessing. <laughs> so tell us, how in the world did you get into the Pharmacy Podcast Network? Wow. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I'm a big fan of your show. Um, I'm a double fan. I'm a double fan <laughs> of you being podcasters or vodcasters, and I'm also a fan because you're pharmacists, so you get double fan base. Yay. <laughs> so... Um, Wow. I tell you what, I, I can't take uh, some type of visionary uh, credit for the Pharmacy Podcast Network. It really was something that I, uh, I did initially because I was tired of repeating myself. Um, in, uh, in 2004, I entered the pharmacy space from telecom, and I worked for a company in Allison Park, Pennsylvania, which is near Pittsburgh, called Soft Raiders. And soft writers were, were the developer of the very first Windows-based system for institutional pharmacy called Framework LTC, which controls basically everything that a long-term care institutional pharmacy would, would want through their software system. And I fell in love with that aspect of my job because I did a tremendous amount of listening and creativity to get them from their DOS-based system to a Windows platform which when you're pushing out um, 600,000, 2,000 prescriptions a day, that's very disruptive to an organization to have to change their software. I've heard that that's the second most disruptive thing to a pharmacy. The first is changing your wholesaler, and the second would be changing your software. So I was very empathetic of that that, uh, experience. So I started developing workflow um, for, for that transfer from one system to the next. And I did very well at Soft Raiders. We went from seven customers to about 220 customers in a very short three and a half years. And um, I outgrew uh, the creativity of the company because I'm very hyperactive. And um, I was recording conversations between myself and API developers. And API is a piece of software that sits between two other pieces of software. So it's kind of like a middleman software program. And I was recording conversations with people that were very intelligent, but they didn't know really how to talk to their talk to their customer. They were talking above their customer. And I feel like um, in office space where um, <laughs> the guy that takes the, the, the plans from, from the customer to the technical writer and takes the technical writer to the, to the customer. And I was that guy, I was the go between and um, I started sending large MP3 files to prospects for the system. And about 2009, January, I discovered something called podcasting. And in 2009, I had no idea what podcasting was. But I did realize that no one was podcasting in pharmacy. And I was driving to the airport one way, uh, one hour. And I really wanted to learn more about my industry. And I got frustrated, so I started my own podcast, and episode one uh, of the Pharmacy Podcast, which back then it was called the Pharmacy Technology Resource Podcast, way too long, <laughs> uh, was, uh, was uh, March 2nd, 2009. It's still out there on YouTube, but it's super embarrassing because it, the quality is horrible, and I didn't know what to say, and I kept, kept saying, um, and um, I still say, um. And, uh, and it blew up. I, I started adding episodes. I was doing about one every other week. It was all based on technology. And then I started running into other pharmacists that liked the content. And in 2012, it became the Pharmacy Podcast Network because I started adopting other pharmacy professionals. There's a gentleman named Ron Lanton, uh, Tony Guerra, 
um, Aaron Albert, all of these people that were amazing content developers and speakers, and they were passionate about what they were doing. And I really created the very first, number one, the very first podcast in the entire pharmacy profession, but number two, more importantly, a network of podcasts that a pharmacist profession, a professional could listen to, whether you're a pharmacy tech, a pharmacist, a pharmacy student, somebody in government relations, somebody in policy and procedure, somebody in marketing, that we could all come together in audio learning. I love audio learning. Um, and there was no content out there. So by the time we reached 2016, I was finally known as a true publication and not just some garage band. And then we built the, the Pharmacy Podcast Studio in 2018. And now today we have 27 channels, 78,000 listeners, 152 countries. We have organizations coming to us saying, what can we do to get on this? I feel like you've all caught up finally after me sitting back waiting for everybody to get here. But I, I couldn't be more excited because of that uh, relationships that we're designing. This has nothing to do with podcasting by itself. This has everything to do with interlacing um, and intertwining these amazing minds that are led by pharmacists. And I'm passionate for you guys, and I'm excited to to be um, a part of this. So was your, this is, that's an incredible story. Was your interaction then with the pharmacist at the like software piece, was that kind of like your main interaction or do you have family that are pharmacists or? Yeah, my very first um, discussion with a pharmacist as a business owner was a long-term care pharmacy out of uh, Dublin, Ohio, near uh, Cardinal Health. Mm -hmm. And um, the woman that really helped me to build the relationships with long-term care pharmacy was Jenny Roberts. And, and she passed away, I want to say four or five years ago. She's an amazing woman. Um, reminds me of myself in a younger version because of her way to build networks. And that's what we're missing, by the way, in pharmacy. The reason why pharmacists struggle so much with payment and PBM reform and so many things that are happening is our lack of networks, our lack of um, inter-networks. And it's, it goes beyond the state association. It goes beyond the national associations. It's the people underneath that are the strategy people that need to start building together. And I think that's the weakness and the strength of being an independent pharmacy owner um, is the independence. And um, so I was communicating with pharmacy owners that didn't understand technology, didn't understand workflow, but they were so passionate about what they were doing. That passion was very infectious. And I said, what could I do to raise them up and enhance what they're doing? So one of the things was, is being a good listener, because I don't like being interviewed. I like being the interviewer. <laughs> well, you're great at it. You're, you're yes. a great interviewee. And the other was, um, was to really help them reach more patients by leveraging technology. And I learned that in specialty and institutional pharmacy, and then kind of pushed that down into the community space. Wow. That is incredible. So how many channels did you say you have now, or how many are under the umbrella? We have 27 active channels uh, mm -hmm. that have uh, content coming out once a month. And then we have some new channels that are coming out in 2020. And we're going to start calling them series because sometimes channels sunset and we'd rather them be a part of a podcast rather than being standalone podcast. So we have a catch-all podcast called the Pharmacy Podcast Nation. And, and it traditionally is myself as the interviewer, but I'm really kicking off the subject that will be talked about. So for example, we just released on Monday, December 16th, the PBM reform series. And this is for two purposes. One, to support the PBM reform that we all have to go through to get more um, pharmacists involved and paid properly and better patient care. But then two, to educate the public. So mm -hmm. the conversations are going to be understandable by someone that's educated and understands basic business to give them insight into what that means. What does PBM reform mean? That's nice. awesome. Hopefully they can be even shareable with like legislature. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody that listens to any of the, the series and I didn't put a number on it. I was originally going to, but it may grow. So one, number one came out that was with NCPA's vice president of government affairs and um, Cassidy. She's amazing. She's down to earth, makes sense. And um, anybody that can push that out to legislators that you already know um, 
definitely do so because it's consumable and you, and you can understand it. That's good. That is really awesome. So Todd, is this your full-time job now? Do you do anything else on the side or this is everything? So up until two months ago, uh, the pharmacy podcast was really a double job. Um, in 2014, I started working um, because of my wife being, being very angry sometimes with how much I was working. She started keeping count and she says I was doing about 22 hours a week extra in just the podcast. Mm -hmm. So with a 40 hour, 50 hour job, you know, and then the podcast, it was really drawing from my family. So I kind of trickled along and tripped along until about two months ago where I left my primary um, career and, and, and employer called New Season. And New Season is a opioid usage disorder treatment center that I was trying to marry pharmacists with and very much loved that position and a director of strategy and really like the organization. They're very sincere and down to earth and they believe in, in wellness. However, they weren't embracing pharmacy and the only the only provider, healthcare provider that comes to mind when you're talking about a, a substance disorder as a pharmacist kind of overseeing everything. So till this day, I still don't think that OUD, opioid usage disorder, has embraced pharmacists as much as they should. Mm -hmm. But I am seeing CPSN and some of the pharmacy networks as well as uh, some of the purposeful grant funding that's coming through finally touching pharmacy as the leader in, um, in opioid usage disorder. So I left two months ago, I'm fully pharmacy podcast network and I'm working in a strategic function with another uh, company called the APPA that stands for American Pharmacy Purchasing Alliance. And it's a buying group that I basically helped to start about six or seven years ago um, as kind of an advisor to the original founder. And now we're trying to change buying groups in the same way that pharmacy is changing. So we're trying to keep up with the times and keep up with that, with that, what's, what's happening in healthcare. Awesome. That's wow. incredible. So I'm sure your family's happy. Yes. <laughs> I, I went home a lot more often. I went out to the ASHP in Las Vegas just last week. Amazing. More pharmacists in one place. I was kind of shaking. I was like, pharmacist, pharmacist, pharmacist. <laughs> like Will Farrell when he's like, in uh in step or not step brothers or what was it called it was a movie where he was going through a party and he was like what's up what's up oh <laughs> it was uh, night at the rockberry <laughs> going through the party he's like what's up what's up <laughs> to all the girls and that's the way i felt like it was every time i saw a pharmacist i was like i want to talk to you i want to talk to you <laughs> oh that is so heartwarming because i feel like my husband will come to some events like with all of his pharmacists and he's just like, oh, a pharmacist, oh, another pharmacist. <laughs> he's like, oh, God. we're going to talk about drugs and pharmacy all day. So no, it's so heartwarming. <laughs> By the time I get up, I could listen to you people, you people, you pharmacists, <laughs> people, you people. No, we're cool people. That's cool. We'll be you people. Yes. What I'm is your greatest fan. Oh. What is your typical like work week look like? Because I know like sometimes you've got conferences and traveling. So I divide my work week into three sections. Number one is our clients because I need to make sure that we're getting their content out as well as marketing it better and more properly and kind of doubling up on what they're doing. And then number two is our subject matter expertise that fold down into one of those 27 stations. And then number three, the outward reach, which includes conferences and in and, and trips and, and going places to actually engage. And you have to combine kind of all three of those to really keep up with a publication. I'm blessed to have a team finally helping me that I'm not a one man band anymore. Um, I sold off a portion of the Pharmacy Podcast Network about 18 months ago. And the group now helps with administrative functions. The CFO is a godsend because I cannot, uh, cannot stand finances. I'm, I'm horrible with money and I don't keep track of things. So I have somebody and already we've seen such changes and in the organization from a maturity perspective. And then I really get the opportunity to, to do a lot of my own editing because I, I think that's something I need to let go, but it's very hard to let it go when you're passionate about it sounding good. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I'm keeping up with outside industry media so that I can pay attention to other podcasts, other way of distributing, other networks, so that the Pharmacy Podcast Network is always at the forefront 
so that pharmacist voice is out there so that we're inter we're intermixing with other podcasts and um, that helps to um, really give the public uh, awareness of what a pharmacist actually does. So the 27 networks plus or, or, or channels or whatever, um, <clears throat> how does somebody, like if somebody's listening to this for the first time and they're like, I didn't even know there was a pharmacy podcast network, like what are they talking about? Is there, what's the best place for them to, where is the best place for them to go to find the options? You know, cause maybe they, you know, how do they find the menu, I guess? Right. So that's a really good question. So uh, a, a true podcast listener doesn't want to go to a website to listen to the podcast. They want to go to a directory. So they're going to go to iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, which is our main uh, push. I think more than 70% of our listeners are going through Apple Podcasts. Our, our us too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And then there's Anchor and some other outliers. Um, so those are directories. Um, so that's one way to gather the content. However, if you were curious or, or we're trying to advertise our services to a client, we always push them to pharmacypodcast.com forward slash shows, because that'll actually visually show you just like behind my screen, you really can't see it, but all the icons, all the logos of every single show will be there. And then there will be a description of what that show's about. And you could subscribe to that playlist specifically. So you don't have to listen to everything else that we push out through those feeds. Right. Um, that's going to continue to mature. In 2020, we're actually going to start splicing out separated RSS feeds so that we don't have to expect someone to subscribe to a specific list. We're going to start with our more popular shows that get more listens than others, and then we'll start disseminating and start pushing out content specifically by that separated RSS feed um, to be able to really um, rule the world from a podcast perspective for the pharmacy professional. We We think that's very um, relevant and important. And then our next go, which we started laying the groundwork for about 24 months ago, and it's gone so much slower than what I wanted it to. And I'm very hyperactive, if you can't tell, um, <laughs> fast enough, is the patient's channel where we're actually taking trusted pharmacists to know what the heck they're talking about, not Dr. Google. And we're going to start building these stars to deliver that content directly to the consumer. And our first consumer space is from uh, a Florida-based um, uh, public publisher called Helium Radio out of Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name's Eric Rimmel, and he, ha he was a visionary just like me. In 2009, he started an internet radio station, and uh, we are the first healthcare network to join that internet radio station. And Ken Sternfeld, who you've had on your show... Mm -hmm. he, he does the concierge pharmacist, which is a live broadcast at 3 p.m. on Fridays, and we call that Pharmacy Fridays. Awesome, yeah. That is and so is that cool. going to grow? Is that what you're saying? And it's gonna Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. we expect to really, um, you know, not to have delusions of grandeur, but um, my five-year goal is to, is to literally have the largest network of podcasts in the world based on pharmacy, both for consumer and for the professional. Mm -hmm. So that we know that the professionals that have been listening for 10 plus years are actually the candidates for the podcasters to deliver content to the patient that we can trust. Awesome. I like that. Maybe vision. for moms and kids or something. Too. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. that, that group always has questions. <laughs> kids will bring you all sorts of stuff. <laughs> That is so cool. So how, like, you can tell you're super passionate about this and it seems like this brings you joy, like creating and just being creative. How do you fit time in for self-care or what kind of things do you do for fun? Yeah. So I'm very, very inconsistent with self-care. I either do a lot of exercise and keep it up or I don't do any at all for three months and it's up and down. So I really need to mature. I've talked to several people that are pharmacists and friends, Christina Tarantola, um, she runs uh, Enlightened Well Solutions, and, and she said, you really need to work on yourself more consistently. Um, so that's from like an exercise health perspective. I think I eat well. Um, I'm down to one and a half meals a day because it, it's really like only thing I have time for, but it's easy to drink a lot of water and coffee and, and um, eat once a day. And then from a fun perspective, um, I moved from Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, which is an explosive much um, like area of Northern Pittsburgh. And I moved from meeting my wife um, down to Uniontown area, Uniontown, Pennsylvania, which is on the border of West Virginia. 
And I absolutely love riding ATVs. So I love riding four wheelers, uh, getting in the mud, getting dirty and, and uh, doing that as much as I can. Haven't actually done it in about six to nine months, but winter's here. So I definitely want to do some snow riding. Not that you guys with that pool in the background have anything to do. <laughs> Snow, what's that? That sounds well. We kind of have a similar version. Ours are like uh, stand up jet skis yeah. for the water, yeah. some wave runners. <laughs> and, you're, and your background and your family is into racing, Bryn. So, oh, yes. I we'll love it too. I could hang out with you guys anytime. <laughs> well, you got to come down soon. I'm yes. Gonna, might definitely. have a Tesla ride. You can come in. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and going and fast and speed and yes. wind in my hair. <laughs> awesome. Those sound like good self-care. So we got to mm -hmm. go up north and do some ATV yes. rides. I like well, you that. know, they have ATVs down here too. I mean, we have a lot of trails and um, yeah, there's a lot of ATV in around here. We have woods. Actually, Gainesville, where we're from, even though it's in Florida, like we're kind of in the middle of the state. So the beaches are an hour and a half away both ways. <clears throat> so we are kind of rural. I mean, mm -hmm. Ocala is 30 minutes south of here and that's big horse country. They send a bunch of horses to Kentucky and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. Your deer, Florida's deer are tiny. So. <laughs> yes, they are. I'm like, oh, poor little deer. And you can <laughs> come up north and see these gargantuan buck. And they're yes. sweating all the time. Our deer is like sweating. <laughs> detoxing yes, all the detoxing time. Detoxing all the time. <laughs> no. And we have keys deer. Actually, when you go down to the keys, they're even actually, smaller. Yeah. They're called keys deer. Yeah. Well, I'd like to go to the keys. I'd be a keys deer. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So this is just an incredible story. So if somebody, I mean, obviously they're not going to rival you because you've built this beautiful network, but if someone is interested in that, it, what kind of schooling or training do you go through? How did you teach yourself how to like grab all these RSS feeds? And so if I had a hammer, I would just go like this. That's <laughs> what I, learned. I just learned by, uh, there was no, there was, there was no expertise in how to start a podcast until about 2012 where they had a podcasting for dummies that came out. And really at, by that time I was ahead of that book. Um, and so I think that I do everything that I can to help people that want to podcast. I don't want to compete with any podcast. I, I want to anybody that's in pharmacy, I want to encourage to become uh, some part of the network so that we can, we can raise each other's voices up. Uh, this isn't about one single brand. It's not about an individual, um, even though I think individuals can have success uh, on their own based on how they hustle and how they work and what they're dedicated to. I still want the Pharmacy Podcast Network to be looked at as the platform that, um, that a pharmacist can go to to accelerate their voice rather than starting at episode one and crawling up through the, you know, 10 listens, 100 listens, 1000 listens, you know, in a 30 day period, our episodes are getting between 17 and 2300 listens in a 30 day period. So that's mm -hmm. huge, but that's still tiny compared to when I talk to people like iHeartRadio and we were trying to start a, a specific healthcare division with them and their headquarters that we were talking with, their sub headquarters is in Maitland, Florida. And um, I went down there several times to try to convince them that they really needed to start a healthcare professional network. And they were like, well, we want you to have uh, 10,000, a minimum of 10,000 downloads a month. If I, if I wrapped up all of the podcasters that were pharmacists, we would exceed that. Yeah. Um, us alone, you know, we're hitting that 2,300 um, per episode per month. So if I times that by five per week, we would definitely almost be there. But if I add in you know, Core Consult, Mike Corvino, or, or Richard Awaith with RX Radio. And I think these people are under the impression that joining the Pharmacy Podcast Network makes it more about us than them. And that's not the case. It's almost like saying, I'm a DJ and I want to go work for a radio station or be affiliated with the radio station. And we're the radio station doing all the promotion and, and advocacy and push and we're getting into networks. We're getting into pharma. Pharma, it's so exciting to get into pharma where we can develop conversations by the people that I believe should be heading all of this, which is the pharmacists. So Eli Lilly and, um, and several pharmacists did an entire series on type 2 diabetes. Part one has already come out. Part two and part three are coming out very soon. Um, that excites me when you have um, pharmacists leading and, and, and in podcasting, I want pharmacists to always be leading. 
So I'm going to do whatever I can to, uh, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. It almost sounds to me like the network is almost like APHA, like joining for us. I mean, if you've under, because APHA is there to kind of unite us all, but, but not to change us, but we're just a part of it. And it's there, like you're saying, to advocate and to kind of be aware of what's going on and kind of like be just an advocate for us. So it seems to me like your network is more like, more like being a member of APHA. You're still yourself, but yet this, there's this unity in us all coming together can make fun of me for Googling how to become a network association and never finding the answer. So I don't know <laughs> how NCPA or APHA or the ASCP or the NASP, all of these organizations that are coming to our network and broadcasting through our network, I have to go back and say, so how do you become a recognized association? Because that's what the pharmacy podcast is supposed to be. The PPN is supposed to be, it is, um, it's, it's an advocacy for the pharmacist's voice, literally. Right. So if you're a podcaster and you want to be raised up and you want to be, I mean, there's some criteria. We want you to have a minimum of 20 episodes and we want to know you're going to stick. You don't know. There's 750,000 registered podcasts on Apple Podcasts today and only a third of them are active. Mm. So we want them to be active and, and we want them to understand the importance of consistency. Um, you know, two, in 2009, 2010, 2012, when my wife said, you need to shut this down because it's costing us money, mm. um, I could have shut it down. I could have uh, closed it up and been frustrated and you wouldn't believe how much extra work went into this where you, you were making zero dollars. I don't think we saw any money to cover expenses until about 2015. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's something that you have to be passionate about. And as you two know, which I'm so impressed with you that you've been consistent with it. And that actually is the number one indicator for content consumption in popularity is consistency. It's not even quality. Although we're, you know, you guys are, are, are quality and there's definitely quality out there, but it's more important to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So but you spoke of money though and having hard times there, but it doesn't cost anybody to become part of the network, right? If you're a podcast. No, so if you wanna be kind of like the ground level affiliate, um, it absolutely doesn't cost you anything to join. If you want extra marketing and you actually want a chance to actually draw revenue through your show, then we can actually design that as well. And that's there in lies where there might be some cost and or revenue sharing. But um, it, if that's not your focus, you could just stay as an affiliate um, and, you, and you don't even, we don't even have membership fees yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. And then I was thinking like definitely your craving for information and to learn the industry kind of drove you to create this. Were there any thought leaders or people that influenced you um, to kind of create this pharmacy advocacy? Yes. Yeah, so I really paid attention to what was happening in networking overall. And I was really impressed with um, a guy named Todd Barrett, who was outside of the pharmacy industry. I think he's a lawyer. And he built a network of lawyers and I really kind of like looked up to what he accomplished and what he did. And um, I always knew how to network. I just didn't know how to build it through actual podcasting. So it's been layered and I've done things incorrectly. I've done, you know, made mistakes, but it's finally maturing. It's finally getting to the point where we can start um, accelerating because now we have a much stronger platform and support team. Mm -hmm. And then how do you go about finding different ideas? Like, I love that you were like, well, this group in Maitland's, like they clearly need pharmacists here. Like, I love that, like creativity and just finding different things. Are they just things you come across online? Are they from conferences or other industries? So I create, or we create, the network creates about five to seven podcasts per week. And then I'm listening to about three to five podcasts per week. I'm reading I don't think I get any of my news from television, um, which blows me away because I'm of that era where I've definitely seen a transfer from traditional media consumption to now all online. Mm -hmm. I get a ton of information from Twitter. Um, I get a whole bunch of information through, um, through really Google and some of, the, um, some of the keywords that I search for uh, through some of their algorithms that you can set up. So um, it, I feel like information's always coming at us from every direction, um, but you really have to focus in on what you're trying to accomplish. So generating content 
based on what's happening in the uh, world and in our country and the marketplace uh, is so easy. It's, I could come up with 10 podcasts probably in 20 minutes based on what I know is happening in pharmacy, in healthcare, in, in policy, in technology, in pharmacogenomics, in mm-hmm. um, a digestible sensor by eTechDRX that activates in your stomach acid and starts telling your physician and pharmacist how fast you're metabolizing the medication. So what, a, what an amazing time to be in this pharmacy industry and to be a pharmacist and to be supporting pharmacists because there's going to be monumental changes in the next 24 uh, months to five years. So um, I don't think pharmacy will be recognizable in 10 years. Uh, it certainly won't have anything to do with just dispensing. It'll be much more uh, driven from a clinical expertise of the actual pharmacist. Yeah. And some people are nervous about the future of pharmacy, but to me, I just see it as opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like we have to change. Wow. Let's change. Let's do something new. So it depends on your perspective. And I think students um, really watch our podcast or listen to our podcast or podcast podcast. Um, and you got, just to kind of advertise for you, for our students, you actually have student led podcasts or student podcasts, correct? The Pharmacy Future Leaders was a podcast I started. Um, I had no idea how to run it. I ran it by myself for a year. And then I ran into Tony Guerra, who is an amazing podcaster. He runs the Pharmacy Resident podcast. Um, I just saw him at ASHP, and it was the first time we met in person after knowing each other for four years. So that's so wild when you, I felt like I know him like like a professional brother. And to be able to go up and, and give him a hug and, and watch him play blackjack uh, in Las Vegas. <laughs> and he, he's, uh, he's just an amazing man. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to, to know him and have him part of our network and what he's done. And, and that's a prime example to the pharmacy students. Listen, if you're listening right now, you're watching this vlog and, and you're nervous about pharmacy, understand that your nervousness is is limited or should be limited based on your creativity and drive because with a farm d in hand today you could do so much more than what you could have done 20 years ago you were put into a you were putting into a a tiny little box and and this podcast is thinking out of the box and that's exactly what uh you know pharmacy students need to do they need to look at their marketplace they need to look at their community they need to um to think what could I do that's never been done before or to enhance something that's just starting? You know, pharmacogenomics started getting talked about in our healthcare space about 10 years ago, but it's only been hot for the last 24 months. And it's still going to be because it's, it's not even ready at the level from what I'm hearing from pharmacists that talk back to me about the true, true uh, uh, layering and application of, of PGX. So there's so much happening in our healthcare system. There's no reason not to be on fire if you're a pharmacist mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so the students can come and find those podcasts that you, you guys have on, on that, the same resources, right? Yes, yeah, so if you go to pharmacypodcast.com, you'll find the shows tab or the podcast tab, and that will be pharmacypodcast.com forward slash shows. And then under there, you'll see the little um, icon or the logo that says Pharmacy Future Leaders. And that's the podcast dedicated to the students. We're looking for a new host. So we're hoping to get a West Coast school involved, uh, NSU, Nova Southeastern University, down in Fort Lauderdale through Scott Chelson. Dr. Chelson is an amazing content developer. He ran, um, he helped us uh, build that relationship. And Joanne Pio ran that show for quite some time. Dr. Pio is an amazing lady. And, And what's interesting about her is she started as a student. I think she was a P3. And we watched her grow. We watched her graduate. And now she's podcasting on Senior Rx Radio. So it's the first podcaster that's gone from one podcast and graduated to another. So Aww. it's like the baby that grew up on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we watched him grow. Yes, I did. I'm so proud of her. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so cool. What neat things you're doing. Yeah. Would you ever... Um, I mean, I guess things are changing so much. I was going to say, do you recommend pharmacists go through like a business school route or how they go about uh, learning marketing or strategic planning like you do? So you can absolutely never um, go wrong with a business added degree or certificate or program. And understanding marketing, uh, that's really just another word for communications. So marketing and business is hand in hand with pharmacists. And it really depends on 
what your forte and interest is. Don't choose something that you're not truly passionate and interest about. If you want to go into pediatrics or senior care and or you want to go into specialty disease states or multiple sclerosis or cardiovascular diseases or something that you can dig into, I will say that if you're a niche to something and you're specific to something, you'll be worth more to another entity that is in fact looking for that expertise. So don't be, don't be afraid to do something that you don't think is going to be popular today. Infectious diseases, um, epidemiology. Um, there's so many crevices to healthcare that you could get into that you could probably find an equally passionate physician to partner with and then develop something that we've never seen before. Um, so it's passion, it's drive, it's, um, it's doing a little bit every day. It's taking those inches. Um, everybody wants their podcast. When we hear about people launching a podcast to be popular, you know, day five or day 30. And listen, I wasn't popular until I think, two, it doesn't feel like I was popular until like 2014. So, I mean, and sometimes I still look back on our ratings and our rankings and I'm like, we're not really where we should be. And that's just because I'm, I'm never satisfied. But <laughs> You have to keep doing it. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep going. And it's just like medication adherence. It's like, why are we telling our patients to do something consistently and then we don't do it ourselves? Right. Mm. Well, we were happy when we had like five listeners. We're like, oh, somebody's listening. That's our attitude. We're like, oh my gosh, now there's 10. So yeah, we're happy just that anybody's listening. <laughs> but I, yeah. I remember you telling me in the past very much like, you go with whatever project you're passionate about. You're like, I'm not really doing other work right now besides things I'm passionate about. And I just was like at that point in my life where I was like, Oh wow, that's, that's such a, a great concept. <laughs> like, but it's so true. Like your life just goes so much better when mm -hmm. you are like living with what, right. when you're aligned with your passion. Yeah. There's so many um, subjects that I want to dig into, but it's going to take a pharmacist to unravel so that's the fun is I'm finally positioned that I don't have to ever have um, um, a subject or a podcast series that I couldn't reach out to a pharmacist. Um, if you look at my LinkedIn, I think I'm 5,000, 6,000 connections. And I think 5,000 of them are probably pharmacists or 4,500 are pharmacists. So um, it's an amazing place to be for me in this long journey that I feel like I've plateaued to the point that now it's time to start working. I finally got to a point where we can take this publication uh, to really change things. And we're concentrating on PBM reform right now and what that means for pharmacists' pay, their careers, but more importantly, what that means for patients, especially that are in rural areas that are relying on their community pharmacy to care for them for all kinds of things that go crazy beyond pharmacy. So um, I'm very passionate about PBM reform and I think every single active pharmacist in America and needs to understand what that means and what needs to understand how to become involved so that we can advocate to um, policymakers. Well, thank you so much. Cause I, I, I think you are definitely the gold standard. You're the leader. Like you're the one who is like, everybody's going to be chasing you if, 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 as we continue to grow as podcasters, because you just laid the foundation for us and you're not don't, even a pharmacist. Huh? Don't chase me, join me. Stop chasing <laughs> <laughs> right, join you. But I'm just saying, like you, you're the gold standard. You're. Th thank you so much. I mean, as a pharmacist and a podcaster, thank you so much for your passion, and thank you for. And you're not even a pharmacist. Again, like to find us interesting and to want to help us, it's so admirable. And I know my own husband can't watch our channel. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I don't know us. what Heather's doing. Yeah, same thing. It's like I, I'm somewhere else. But yeah, so thank you so much like for, for somebody like you to just take interest in us and to want to promote us and help us, like the PBM thing. Um, I can't thank you enough for just being who you are. Thank you. That means a lot to me, coming from pharmacists, so especially you too. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. I know I'm like, oh, there's more questions I have, but I'm like, <laughs> our time is running out. Oh my goodness. Um, do you still utilize a lot of like your search engine optimization stuff in promoting the Pharmacy Podcast Network? Yes. Um, there's a guy named Josh Peristani who lives out in California. He's one of the original founders, actually the original founder of the APPA. And he is amazing with search engine optimization. So I never think that you should be great at everything. I think you should pick one thing to be really good at, and then you should outsource as much or 
if you can, uh, partner with other people who are like-minded and, and then reciprocate some type of benefit between each other, especially if you're starting out or especially if you're an entrepreneur, um, learn from others. And that's what I do. I've really leveraged the, um, the expertise of others. But search engine optimization has changed drastically. I remember one of my strategies back in 2011 was to buy domains on focused subjects that you could just type in the domain <coughs> dot com. So pharmacy GPO dot com <clears throat> was about finding a buying group, for example. And um, and now that's not even the way the search engine works. If you have a domain of something specific like um, uh, you know the best pie in America dot com or something, it doesn't it doesn't search that domain like it used to. So um, so search engines changing and the best way to get on top of the charts is sincerity. So just producing great content that you label correctly and that you put in the meta tags correctly. And, but that stuff fascinates me. And, yeah, um, and it changes all the time. That's mm. what I've heard. I've heard the Google, you have to kind of be that person that stays on top of it because I've heard the algorithm changes all the time. So you got to kind of stay on top of like what is changing. Yep. There you see um, a hidden way when search engine optimization first started that you put the word in white and you put all the words like peanut butter. If you're a peanut butter company, you'd put it in white and you put it on a white background so nobody could see the word. And oh. if you said the word peanut butter more than someone else, then you went to the top of the rankings. That so, is brilliant. Oh, uh, I never thought of that. An algorithm actually caught up with that and actually penalized those companies and oh. dropped them to the bottom. Yeah. Wow. But that was brilliant. Wow. People are smart. <laughs> I, like, I never thought of that. I know. You can always but you can't do that now. It doesn't yes. work. You got to keep evolving. I remember, I remember when I bought pharmacypodcast.com, I swear to God, I thought it was a waste. And I'm like, do I really <laughs> want to buy this? Like, how many times I'm going to podcast? All right. Pharmacy podcast. And I've been offered about $65,000 for that domain. Uh, till this day. So I'm, I'm glad I bought it because nice. it's really what, who we are and what we are. Yeah. Well, I think about, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Vanderchuk. He bought, and originally he bought all the wine, like Chardonnay.com. Like that was way back when people thought, were oh, you crazy buying those? But you know, he right. made tons of money selling those things. Great. All the wine names.com. I'm sure it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you so much for your time and just sharing your journey. It's incredible to learn from you. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for having me on your show. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yeah. And Thank when these you. new things happen, like all this new stuff that comes up, like we definitely love to have you on to kind of talk about the new stuff too, as it happens. So I would love to, and, and vice versa, you both are out there in the community and you're working with patients every day. So when something else comes up, I'd like to have you both on our show. I don't think you've been on our show yet. So we gotta, we gotta get you on the pharmacy. Yeah, podcast. We, we were on the concierge one. Oh yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We got to get you on the nation. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> It's funny. I feel like this is our Christmas gift or something. Like Todd came on our show. Oh, the Todd Yuri. We're so blessed. Oh my goodness. This has been so fun. So guys, please check out the Pharmacy Pod Podcast Network. You'll find something, multiple things that will interest you. I'm and sure. change your life. Yeah. And I tell all my students about it. It's like their homework assignment. I'm like, go on here, <laughs> find a good episode for me to listen to. <laughs> yeah. You got to put those students to work. Yeah. They share some great insights. They really do. So thank you so much. Developers. What was that? They're great content developers too. Yes. So yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they have lots of interest. So it keeps them. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. But thank you for joining us from sunny Florida and brisk Cold. <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> Pittsburgh. That's the other side of Pennsylvania. Oh, sorry. Sorry. The clean side of Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Heather. I'm Bryn. And we'll join you next time. We have lots of interesting guests coming up. Yes. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, Todd. And uh, we'll see you all guys next time. Thanks Pharmacist so much. out of the box. Keep downloading. <laughs>